imagine that you're writing an abstract for a conference. This is all that many people are going to read about your study. It's often all that the editor will read, the peer reviewers will read before making, before forming an opinion on your work at the beginning of the process. So it really is so important to get this right. A high quality abstract, maybe 200 words, 250 words is quite hard to write. If you follow the guideline here that I'm going to give you in a minute, you will be easily able to write an abstract in English without too much effort. Remembering that a good quality abstract is honest and precise, stands alone, contains no technical jargon, and often, as you'll see later in some of the examples that I'm going to give you at the end of the presentation, today, citing no references, and the quality of the abstract will inform your editor's decision. So try to put the energy, put the effort into this to get it right. Sadly, sadly, many authors write their abstracts in a rush, almost as an afterthought. This has to be, of course, a concise, standalone piece of writing with a very clear message. And if you have difficulty writing an abstract in English, you can use the four-question trick, the four-question technique to develop the structure with your abstract writing and get the content in there that you need to get your message across. We do this in writing workshops, by the way. We just put down these four questions on the board, on the whiteboard, and then we answer them with the students, with the writers, with information relevant to individuals' research projects. Why did you do the study? You answer that. What did you do? You answer that. What did you find? You answer that. And what did you conclude? And you answer that. The four question technique, one or two sentences for each of these different questions, and then you delete the questions, and that's what gives you the structure of abstract writing in English. It's called a structured abstract. Many journals, as you'll see later, many Bentham Science journals ask authors for a structured abstract. Even if your journal doesn't ask for a structured abstract, you can still do it, you should still do it, in order to effectively get your message across. Remember, it's your readers who are the most important people, and they need a structure in order to follow what you're doing, what you're writing about in your article. And having a structure in academic writing also helps you as an author, especially if you're writing in your second or third or fourth language. Having that structure can help so much. So what did you do? Why did you do it? What did you find? And what did you conclude? In sequence in the abstract, as we'll see later, you should be able to go with a colored marker, colored pencil, into an abstract that's well written, that you use all the time in your own field, and mark off the answers to my four questions. You will see them in sequence in articles, in abstracts that have been well written. They're well written, they're easy to read because they have that clear structure. It's the structure that makes the paper easy to read. And if people read your work, they will cite your work. They will use your papers. Your impact factor, your H index will go up, which is what it's all about for us as academics. So here's an example, again, from my own work. Structure to the abstract, those four questions, set the basis for the reader to understand what you're doing in sequence. The question, the data collection, the results, and then the discussion, the interpretation, as we'll see now as we jump into the remaining second section of academic article structure. Remember that the first part, the first section of academic paper writing structure is the title and the abstract. We've talked about that. Now let's come into the rest 
of the article structure, remembering that readers need to know throughout the article where they've come from, where they are now, and where they're going. Just like watching a movie, just like reading a book, a detective story, you need a plot. Creative writing is no different in academic article writing as in any other kind of creative writing. A paper is a story. You have to keep people interested. So let's talk then about the second sections, the second section of academic article structure, starting with the introduction. Now, remember, the average length of an academic paper published around 6,000 words, five or 6,000 words. So you have to balance your writing. You can't have an introduction that's 10,000 words long and then a short method section, a short results section, a short discussion section. You've got about 1,500, maybe 2,000 words to write an effective introduction. You've got to keep it short, two or three paragraphs if possible. Grab the reader, get them interested immediately in the crucial issue that your paper addresses and keep it short and don't do a literature review. So many students, they do a literature review for their masters, for their PhD, and then they think, I'm gonna include all that information in all my academic papers. Nobody wants to read tons of references. Nobody wants to read endless citations. Keep it short and bring the reader in at the start of the introduction with an opening sentence that takes you straight to the issue. Get the most important details in and provide the reader with a brief summary of the controversies and the best evidence for that controversy. Remember, your paper is going to be a question, probably. So ending the introduction with that crisp, clear research question and how you set out to answer it. We can talk about writing styles. We can talk about how to write. We will talk about how to write in later Bentham Diffusion presentations in this series. But let me just say that if you wish to effectively communicate with your readers most efficiently, then writing in the active voice is probably a better choice than writing in the passive. Introduction then, a useful three paragraph template that you can use, that we give you to use to put together your introduction. What's the question? Tell the reader what the question is that your article is gonna address. Then in the second section, the second paragraph of the introduction, tell the reader the state of the art. Give them some recent relevant literature that tells them that this question is interesting. Why is there a debate? Why is this something that needs to be looked at with your paper? And then finish the introduction with a crisp, clear sentence that says something like, here we show, this paper shows, in this study we show that. Look at any paper written in nature, written in science, for example, you will see this phrasing at the end of the introduction. It sets up for the reader what will come next in the method section, what the reader can expect in the rest of the article. So three paragraphs, state the question, tell the reader what's the state of the art, what's relevant in terms of literature that's recently been published on this particular topic, and then this study shows, that's the next part of the introduction. That's your template for writing, for structuring effectively the introduction to your next paper, which brings me into the method section. Now, everybody always says that the method section is the boring bit of academic writing, but that's not true. This is the best part. This is the most exciting, best bit of academic paper writing. Why? This is your chance in your writing to take your readers on a journey. Tell them what you did in your study from the beginning of the study to the end. Think about the structure of your methods section, your materials and methods, your data and methods as a timeline. Structure, come up with a series of subheadings 
in the method section that summarize your experiment or your study in terms of a timeline. What did you do first? What did you do second? What did you do third? And what did you do last?